Mammals have evolved to compete for resources for survival, but at the same time, their sympathetic neural and behavioral systems have also developed to help and protect other group members. For example, the mothers develop a bonding with infants and protect them. On the other hand, dogs are the oldest domesticated animals. They have acquired remarkable communication skills and have built the closest relationship with humans. The existence of the human-dog bonding has been anecdotally spoken, but has never become a biological research topic. Oxytocin is an ancestral hormone not only for labor and nurturing, but also for forming bonding and recognitions of group members and partners. Researches in rodents have revealed that pups' attachment behavior facilitates oxytocin release, which leads to nurturing behaviors. Further on, the mother's nurturing behavior facilitates the pup's oxytocin secretion, which enhances the pup's attachment behavior. Oxytocin plays an important role in recognizing an important partner and strengthening the relationship with the dyad. This oxytocin-mediated positive loop is thought to be common in mammals, mothers, and infants. So, does this biological bonding exist between humans and dogs? From our previous studies, we have already found out that dogs' gaze towards their owners facilitates the owner's oxytocin secretion. Now, the next question is, does the dog's gazing behavior start off a positive loop between the owners and their dogs? In the first experiment, the dogs interacted with their owners freely for 30 minutes in a room. Their urinary oxytocin levels were measured before and after the interaction. Interestingly, both the dogs that gazed at their owners longer and their owners' urinary oxytocin levels significantly increased after the 30-minute interaction. This suggests the existence of an oxytocin-mediated positive loop that the dog's gazing behavior facilitated their owner's oxytocin secretion, which led the owners to interact more with their dogs, and then this facilitated the dog's oxytocin secretion. Next, we try to find out if oxytocin directly mediates the positive loop. We conducted a nasal administration of oxytocin to the dogs, and on the other hand, limited the owner's interaction. Dogs that were administrated either oxytocin or saline were allowed to move freely for 30 minutes inside a room where their owner and two unfamiliar persons were seated. The dog's behavior during the experiment was recorded and we compared the urinary oxytocin levels between oxytocin or saline conditions. From the results, when administrated oxytocin, female dog's gazing behavior significantly increased. Furthermore, the urinary oxytocin levels of the owners of the female dogs that were administrated oxytocin increased, even though they were not administrated oxytocin. Overall, it is thought that oxytocin administration enhanced female dogs' gazing behavior, and as a result, their owner's oxytocin secretion increased, and this points out the existence of an oxytocin-mediated human-dog interspecific positive loop. Now, why did oxytocin only influence female dogs and their owners? It is known that there is a sex difference in the function of oxytocin and it also affects awareness and aggression towards intruders. In our experiment, unfamiliar persons were also present in the experimental room. Maybe the presence of these strangers balanced out the gazing behavior towards their owner in male dogs, and the effect of oxytocin couldn't be seen in both male dogs and their owners. Now, on to the final question. Can this oxytocin-mediated positive loop only be seen with dogs? Previous studies revealed wolves, the closest respective relative to dogs, do not show human-like communication skills as dogs do. Here, we conducted the same experiment with wolves and their owners. 
The wolves that participated have lived with their owners from their early life and can deeply interact with their owners. But apart from dogs, they rarely looked at their owners throughout the 30 minute interaction, and urinary oxytocin levels of both wolves and their owners did not change. From these results, an oxytocin mediated positive loop could not be seen in wolves and their owners, and this suggests that dogs gain this interspecific positive loop during evolution. It can be said that dogs successfully cohabitate with humans because they have been successful in adapting the bonding mechanism to relations with humans. Needless to say, Dogs originally have this mechanism with the same species. On the other hand, humans also went through some sort of evolution that allowed them to bond with other species, that is, dogs, to evaluate if oxytocin mediated positive loop with other species is a mechanism that co evolved both in dogs and humans. We must wait for results from researches in humans. Dogs and humans are both said to have acquired social tolerance due to change of temperament during evolution, allowing them to develop common superior communication skills as a basis of cooperation and empathy. As a result, dogs and humans can form a biological bonding, as shown in the present study. The results of this research also indicate that. Dogs and humans both obtain a mechanism for understanding each other and is suggestive of the existence of empathy between dogs and humans, and is important in considering how human society has been developed.